Candace Owen has decided to come out against Kamala Harris. She questions Vice President Kamala Harris's blackness after discovering that she included photos with black family friends in her book and referred to them as aunts and uncles. And I quote, black people will just accept that you only have all these photos because you're like super black. Our pictures of her in Harlem. Look at this photo. She just posts up right here. Visiting my uncle Freddie in Harlem. Harlem was always a magical place for me. Now, what's interesting about this picture is the man behind. I don't know if that's actually her uncle Freddie. Right. Mm -mm. Like that came to my mind. I'm like, is this just like a guy working on the side of the street? And she's just like including him because this picture shows a black man that's in Harlem and again signals to black people that like she's with her uncle up in Harlem kind of feels that way. But then I realized that she featured some more pictures of her black aunties and her black uncles. And we see Uncle Fred again. Take a look at this photo. <laughs> this is mm -mm. this is gonna drive you guys crazy because I just I still can't believe it when I read it. So you see three obviously black people in this photo. Right. Do not question the authenticity of their blackness. And the caption reads, I'm blessed with an amazing family. I'll never be able to thank Auntie Chris, Uncle Freddie, and Aunt Mary enough for their constant encouragement and support. They always showed up for me as they did here at a campaign event for my DA's race that we held at a San Francisco, you guessed it, jazz club, because hey, we're talking Harlem, we're talking black people, we're talking Afros. Let's also post a picture of you in a jazz club with your aunties and your uncles. And like black people will just accept that you only have all these photos because Pandering. you're like super black. But then I said, wait a second, she doesn't have an Aunt Mary or an Aunt Chris, right. or an Uncle Fred. I've been deep in this woman's genealogy. Who are we talking about here? There's, there's, these people do not exist. Wow. And I said, is it possible that like somewhere in the book that she's alleging, probably assuming that no one is gonna actually read through, she acknowledges that these aren't her real aunties and uncles? Right. And the answer is yes, my friends. There's a passage about Aunt Mary and Uncle Freddie in this book, The Truths We Hold, which is really just. And this is why it's critical for black people to read. She's going out here cosplaying as black, but in the same book that Candace Owens is referencing, she called herself the first Indian American. And mind you, Kamala Harris is from San Francisco. Her mother is first generation. Excuse me. Her mother is from India. She's first generation. Her mother left India to escape an arranged marriage is what happened. Her mother was down with Willie Brown and some other people over in US Berkeley, USC Berkeley, but her mother, Kamala Harris, nor Willie, Willie Brown have any affiliation with Huey P. Newton or the Black Panther parties in San Francisco, but they was there prominent around the same time. Why is that not a part of her history if she's black? the greatest trick ever played on black America. She writes this, my mother surrounded herself with close friends who were really more like sisters. My godmother, a fellow Berkeley student whom I knew as Aunt Mary was one of them. They met through the civil rights movement that was taking shape in the early 1960s and was being debated and defended from the streets of Oakland. Aunt Mary, just like the same professor at US Berkeley that advocated for you, you and your mama, the, 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 the lady who worked in psychology and I'm pretty sure when she was working in psychology and backgrounds and redlining and all that she asked her mama why are you so worried about black people why are you as an Indian woman from India over here hanging around all these black people it was a part of the agenda it was a part of the agenda for a whole bunch of people that's not like us, they not like us, they not like us, to code switch and come in and say our lingo and all of a sudden they're black too. Went to the soap boxes in Berkeley's Sproul Plaza. As black students spoke out against injustice, a group of passionate, keenly intelligent, politically engaged young men and women found one another. My mother and Aunt Mary among them. They went to peaceful protests where they were attacked by police with hoses. They marched against the Vietnam War and for civil rights and voting rights. They went together to see Martin Luther King Jr. speak at Berkeley and my mother had a chance to meet him. She told me that at one of these anti-war protests, the marchers were confronted by the Hell's Angels. She told me that at another, she and her friend were forced to run for safety with me in a stroller after violence broke out against the protesters. But my parents and their friends were more than just protesters. They were big thinkers, pushing big ideas, organizing their community. Aunt Mary, her brother, my 
uncle, Freddie, my mother and father, and about a dozen other students organized a study group to read the black writers that the university was ignoring. So you, you guys, duh, duh. What can I say here? I'm, I'm, I'm at, I am being reduced Pandering. to sound effects. She wrote this book and she starts, there are pictures of her in Harlem. Look at this photo. And then on top of that, right? Separate. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. I have said it numerous times on this platform. When they found cocaine at the White House, I immediately said, you know what? I believe this is Kamala Harris's. I had no facts, no evidence, no proof. Only thing I had was speculation based on affiliation with Uncle Lou. Willie Brown groomed her before 1994 Freak Nick in which she was at. Then she interviewed Uncle Luke on the platform. We see Fannie Willis sit there in the court and lie under perjury and say she has never been to the White House, but she was on visiting list, the visiting log. And if you go back and look, Fannie Willis was at the White House the day that they found the cocaine at the fucking White House. Well, I thought it helped. Uh, and at first, everything got better. Maybe because she started making more work trips. It was fine until last year's spring. Well, then the strange behavior suddenly returned. So this man is basically saying that uh, reports have come out that cocaine in the White House was Kamala's. She may have just thrown away her little chance of winning the election. And I definitely believe it. Look how she act. Look at her nostrils. Look how strong and slender her face is. We understood everything. Gas, inappropriate laughter, outbursts of anger. It became immediately obvious to those who worked with Harris from the beginning. Now, at some point, everything reaches a point of absurdity. And there was a big scandal. If you guys probably even heard about it. In July, security found a bag of cocaine. Mm -mm. And the worst part of it was that it got leaked to the journalists. So the matter couldn't be hushed up before it became public. Now, luckily, all the right-wing media immediately rushed to blame Hunter Biden. Right, because he's so a crackhead. It was hard enough to ignore the story. It was eventually hushed up. Uh, but I heard that afterwards, there was a very serious conversation between Harris and Biden. Mm. And the president was mad about what happened. Hunter Biden, unfortunately, was allowed to take the fall for this. And this really angered Joe Biden. Wow. Uh, but, you know, at this point, there is nothing he can do because it was either blame uh, Hunter or put the blame where it rightfully belonged on Harris and her staff, which, you know, that would have destroyed Biden. Biden's campaign. Everybody knows that Hunter's a drug addict. Mm -hmm. but if people got wind that uh, Harris was partaking in the festivities. This would cause a major problem. Mm, 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 mm. Was it Harris who brought the cocaine? No, but the cocaine was brought in for Harris. Mm. And the staff brought it. Clearly, some high So the cocaine was brought in for Harris and staff brought it in. Again, when Fannie Willis sat down in front of the Georgia. A judge in the George and said that she never visited the White House. They went back to the logs the same day that they found the cocaina at the White House is the same day that Fannie Willis was there and did not check out until the next day. What kind of party are you having? The White House and business hours is closed at least about 5, 36 o'clock. Why did Fannie Willis check out the very next day? Or was she still there? She had to sign out and sign back in. That's what I heard. So they be having parties like it's 1999 in the White House. We already seen a senator, staff member, bent though was backwards in the White House. What kind of freak stuff that they got going on there? Let me know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for liking the video. So prior to the channel, support, support, support. Greatly appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed the show.